Even if you refinance in the last year, we can still probably save you money. All it takes is a five-minute phone call to find out how you can save up to thousands of dollars a year. This amazing 3.125 rate new car loan, and our new fast track loan process can get it done in record time. So call today, 844-425-3669. That's 844-425-3669. Yeah, it's the biggest no-brainer in the history of mankind. Call us at 844-425-3669. I have a life source yeah. water filtration system at home. I've had it for well, years and I, I truly love it. Uh, with this system, it connects directly to your plumbing from the outside, which means any tap in your house, you're getting freshly filtered, great tasting, actually delicious water. If you buy bottled water, you can kick back your buy if you want to. You're actually going to taste the difference when you drink and you cook with light source water. You're bathing, you're cleaning, you're cooking with bottled water quality. Your skin and hair will feel the difference when you shower with light source water. All of it with light source water, what a difference. And there's no maintenance of any kind. No filters to change, no salt to add, you're done. Once installed, you don't worry okay. anymore. Call Life Source at 800 334 5009. 800 334 5009. Visit lifesourcewater.com. Life Source Water. Life Source Water. KFI AM 640. I'm sure you're going to get a bunch of things to handle your own. Okay, just to let you know, I have three of them so you don't have to watch your own. Okay, guys. You'd buy a beauty for the scratch house, Billy. You don't care about it. You don't care about it. You don't care about it. and get his thoughts on them, astrologically speaking, here on Coast to Coast. Well, ParanormalDate.com keeps cruising along 796 people shy of 124,000 signed-up members. Free to sign up at ParanormalDate.com. And then we've got a little something for you if you're 60 plus. We do, and you know, with Valentine's Day just about a week away or less, you can find that special someone that thinks like you do at ParanormalDate.com. And if you're looking for a mature Valentine, 60 plus, you can go to ParanormalDate.com slash seniors. So, choice is yours, ParanormalDate.com and 
ParanormalDate.com slash seniors. At ParanormalDate.com, you meet the most fantastic people. Hi, I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Jennifer. What brings you here? Yeah, I'm here to meet someone who understands me. How so? Well, I'm into UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot, conspiracy theories, uh, the paranormal, uh, that kind of stuff. But you can't seem to find anyone who gets it. Oh, well, um, nice to meet you, Tom. I, I gotta go. Uh, uh, okay, guess that's not your cup of tea. Are you sure? Very. Good luck with that. I can't meet anyone when I'm out, and I really can't find a website for my unique interest. What is one to do? Have you thought about ParanormalDate.com? Paro, what dot what? Who are you? I'm a paranormal matchmaker, and it's ParanormalDate.com. It's a website for people looking for people like them. Stuff you like, remember? Interesting. Uh, I'll give it a try. Well, let's try this again. Uh, hi, I'm Tom. Hey, I'm Deb. Your profile on ParanormalDate.com looks very interesting. So you really saw a UFO? Well, yeah. It was so intense. But not as intense as me as you. You're an alien chasing flirt, but I kind of like it. Wow, this ParanormalDate.com thing really works. Maybe ParanormalDate.com is for you. People with an interest in things they hear on George's show find their match daily. So if you're looking for that special someone with an interest in UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot, conspiracy theories, and of course, the paranormal, come to the dating site inspired by George Norrie. It's always free to search, and if you decide to upgrade to our amazing new features, use promo code GEORGE for a great discount. ParanormalDate.com. You are not alone. I'm proud to tell you about this. The Tunnels to Towers Foundation has broken ground on its Do Good Village in Land Lakes, Florida. It's the very first of its kind. It's a community of 110 homes for the foundation's program recipients. So together, these families can heal. It's a special place where families know that their neighbors understand and care about them. It's a community where the children of our nation's fallen or catastrophically injured heroes can grow and experience life together. The Foundation's Do Good Village is going to help these families way beyond you can imagine, and it's all thanks to the extraordinary donations of many acres of land and folks' generosity like yours. Help America's greatest heroes and their families heal together. Make the Do Good Village the first of many communities like it. With every mortgage-free home for them, the Foundation makes good on its promise to do good and never forget the sacrifices our heroes have made for our country and communities. Donate $11 a month to Tunnels to, Tunnels to Tower at T2T.org. That's the number T2T.org. Is your current home loan the right fit for you? Your historic low rates may be a great reason to refinance, but when matched with an expertly chosen loan from Loan Depot, you could be saving money and paying more towards the bottom line. Call a Loan Depot loan officer and ask about our 27-year smart term loan or our 10-year arm loan. Get a great rate matched with a great loan by calling 866-888-LOAN or visit LoanDepot.com. At Loan Depot, home means everything. Rates are subject to change. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing opportunity. NMLS number 174457. License in office to states. Exergen would like you to know about an important study just released by the FDA. It confirms what the medical community has known all along. Non-contact thermometers are not accurate. The study also reports that they fail to meet FDA requirements for accuracy and labeling. With new strains of COVID on the rise, we can't afford to tolerate the rampant false temperature readings from non-contact thermometers. Accurate temperature measurements are essential. You need Exergen thermometers because they're accurate and backed by over 100 clinical studies. Be sure. Be accurate with Exergen. Learn more at Exergen.com. And welcome back, Mark Lorder with us, George Norrie here. Mark, how does it work with events? I'm going to be throwing some uh, titles and events your way. How does astrology work with the subject matter? What do you look at? I mean, is it still a world situation or? Yeah, let's say it's gonna it's gonna be a world situation or an individual or something like that. Yeah. Well, there are charts uh, available uh, depending on where one goes. I, I have been doing this for 50 years, so I've compiled a lot of books, and therefore 
I might talk to some some people or research to determine, make sure I know what the main chart is for a particular country, a particular leader, and so on. But generally, I have that, and I'll look at the look at more than one chart because it's it's yeah, also right. when an event starts. Uh, when there's a crisis that begins, uh, who, who's involved, and so on. So it often takes a whole bunch of charts to sort of like connect the dots. Okay, some of these global hotspots, let's uh, talk about. Uh, Ukraine, Russia, what do you think? <laughs> well, what I think is that um, Vladimir Putin's birth chart, he's kind of like, remember the old uh, Bobby Fischer, Boris I remember that just now. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing. So we've got Biden and currently our president Biden, regardless of who our previous president presidents have been or any futures. Right now we've got kind of Biden as Fisher and, and uh, Putin as Spassky. And what's happening is that uh, Vladimir Putin has been around for 20 years, and his chart is very powerful, particularly with the planet Saturn. And I just did a podcast a year ago. Russia. You see, the countries can be reborn just like I believe we have reincarnation for individuals. And there's a lot of stuff in charts. When I look at people's birth charts, I look at the moon or Pluto or Saturn in different positions. I don't get visions of like somebody was Cleopatra or uh, Julius Caesar or something, but I can see the patterns of like past incarnations. And so, for instance, Russia has a long history at, from Tsar times and the Soviet Union, and now it has another chart from 1991, and they're having what's called the Saturn return, 29, 30 years. They're having an identity crisis. So last year we had um, Alexei Navalny, that whole issue, coming back, and, mm -hmm. and all these um, rebellions going on, and then Putin puts them down. So he has the distraction of, of Ukraine for the last eight years, where, the, where it feels like he can go in there and start World War III. Now, I don't think he's going to do that, Okay, but I think that what happens is he's looking to sort of regain all this power that he had or, or that Russia had when it was the Soviet Union. And as you may know, he was a KGB agent, he was in East Germany. And so when, when you look at his life, you look at his background, and he's been president for 20 years, he's trying to restore this enormous empire. And we're sort of in the weaker position because of everything that's happened in the United States the last several years kind of pulling back from NATO, and that's their sort of a playground there, Eastern Europe. So it's really tough for us whether we're going to be able to do anything to, to stop him. I just don't think he's, he really wants to start World War III. I think he wants to create a lot of uncertainty and sort of regain uh, this sort of pressure on those areas so that NATO doesn't, you know, keep moving forward to the East. But he also wants to save face for himself, doesn't he? Well, he already started this whole thing with Crimea, and he's, you know, it's not crazy from his standpoint when you look at the history of Russia before the Soviet Union, during the Soviet Union, and so on. I mean, the whole issue of Stalin and Hitler and Mussolini, this is part of this Pluto return for the United States and some of these bigger cycles. Um, in a few moments, I do want to tell you about some good things that are going on, so don't forget to ask me about that. Cause, okay. you know, what's called the Astrology Cosmic Calendar app. I've been doing it for 41 years, and it used to be at the center of Wealth and Planet Earth. It's my new newspaper magazine in the 80s and 90s. So I keep doing that, and there's some really good cycles. But as far as you pointing out this area, you know, um, there's a chart for European civilization. It goes back to 800 AD, the crowning of Charlemagne as the Holy Roman Emperor. And so that, there is an actual chart, believe it or not, it goes back to the year 800, George, and to all the listeners. And the planetary positions of Jupiter and Neptune and Saturn and the Sun and Moon, they're still very active for what could be happening in this kind of chess game. It, it doesn't, that chart doesn't control England, for instance, it doesn't control Spain, but it controls France, Germany, uh, Austria, Switzerland, the Czech Republic, those Eastern European areas in Russia. So that's the heart of Europe. And so we see cycles that are coming back that are going back 1,200 years. I've got to ask you about COVID-19. How does it look this year? Well, I did 13 coronavirus <gasps> astrology podcasts back on my great enterprises in what's called Astroscope Markler Astrology. So people can look at what I researched. Uh, what I focused on is we have a chart for China from October of 1949. 
there's a chart for the World Health Organization, for the CDC. So again, like you asked the question, they're like, how do I connect the dots? You know, um, what I do is, the, the way astrology works, so it's basically when I do charting for individuals, people might say, oh, what's happening to me? Look, look at my chart. I always need to get information because I need to know, are you having health issues? Is it money that you're concerned about? Is it a relationship? So if I get the top three or five things in their life and they explain a little bit more and they give me time periods, George, like, okay, so many years ago this happened or in the last six months this occurred or I'm planning to do this in three or four months in the future, then I start connecting all those dots. So it's not like looking into a crystal ball and just sort of saying yes, no, positive, negative. Right. For me, this is all a lot of work. It's very pragmatic. And you, have, you mentioned before, it, to me, it is a scientific sort of analytical study. But do you see COVID going away? Uh, I see it eventually becoming, like they say, an endemic. However, the, the thing is, is that because so many countries in the world have terrible health care, and they look at what in our country and some of the European countries that have relatively good health care, that we have these problems with health care professionals being exhausted, just like we have with people who are delivering or driving trucks or whatever it may be. So, as you know, when you, when you hear some of this news now of all the millions of people who've left jobs and so on, my concern, like one of the things I read in the last 24, 48 hours, is we know that this, this variant, my Omicron, is potentially, from everybody saying, less lethal, right? But what's happening is if it's more transmissible, and if the hospitals get overwhelmed, then the statistics are still very, very difficult. And then there's the, the, the different issue of, like, the original one was affecting older people more. So younger people thought, hey, you know, it's okay, even if I get it, what's the big deal? And then Delta supposedly was more uh, effect, affecting younger people, okay? And this is regardless of whether one's on the side of pro-vaccine or not. So, look, this is the kind of thing where you could ask all the supposed experts, the doctors in the world, and look, they're always fudging or they're always hesitating, and I don't think it's ever a good idea to keep asking these doctors these questions because what, what happens with medicine or vaccines is they're still studying it. They don't have all the answers at any given moment, and if the things are mutating and changing, if they start saying, like, wear a mask or don't wear a mask, remember when the Surgeon General under Trump said, don't don't buy a mask, don't wear one, and then a month later said, you know, wear it? Yeah, even Fauci said that in the beginning. Yeah. It, it, what I think should happen, my view for the United States would be this. I don't think the President of the United States should ever answer a question at all about this thing. The Surgeon General should answer that question. Just like with these issues with Europe, it should be the guy in charge, uh, Blinken, with the State Department. That's why you hire these people. They're the specialists in those areas. So this is where you get a, a President Biden or a Trump or Obama or Jimmy Carter or anybody else. You know, remember when Ford is asked in the debate with Jimmy Carter in 76, where he says, I don't think the domination of the Soviet Union, that leads to his loss to Jimmy Carter. And he's even, he, yeah, somebody in, in the debate actually says, sir, uh, you actually think that the Poles do not feel that they're controlled by the Soviet Union? And he sort of wobbled there. And one of, this is why a lot of these people, they're not prepared, okay? So they have these experts and cabinet members. They're the people who should be a answering those questions. The President of the United States or President of France and so on should give broad statements in general. You know, it's sort of like the Queen, of, you know, Queen Elizabeth, where they just kind of come out and they talk about the nature of the, the empire or the country and give a report. And otherwise, do stuff behind the scenes. But they shouldn't constantly be, you know, a gotcha kind of a thing because they said the wrong word. We're going to take calls with Mark Lerner next hour. We'll need your birth month, day, and year. And then, Mark, I assume you want a direct question from them? Um, well, I can just sort of because we're talking about Pluto, Neptune, if they just give me month, day, and year, I probably know what to say, okay? Because if they ask too much of a question of finance, love, or whatever, I'm still going to sort of go wherever I need to go. All right, so you don't need a question, basically. No, no but I, I would like to say a couple of positive things, just to balance out. Yeah, no, we'll do that next okay. hour with, with okay. that, too. Don't worry about that. Now, what about China, Taiwan? Any problems there? 
difference in the discovery of Uranus in 1781 and three different astronomers who discovered Neptune in 1847. What I'm saying is, like, we have a lot of specific information, but when you ask a question like that, the problem that stumps many of us Monday at Earth astrologers is do we actually know the exact time? Like, like for instance, with President Trump, uh, we know exactly what time, what minute of day he's born. Okay, with, with President Biden, we have an approximate time. Mm -hmm. It's never been actually revealed. Uh, it's been like, from memory, he was born at a certain time. With President Reagan, there were like about 15 different times. And it was only Joan Quigley and these other people, remember, when, when that whole scandal was released in 1988, uh, Astrology in the White House. So, so with some of these leaders, we don't even know what their exact time is, and therefore the, the mundane and earth astrologers have to sort of look between the lines and figure things out. Mark, we're going to come back and talk about hey, some good hey. things that you see and phone calls next. Coast Insiders, the new version of the Coast to Coast AM app is now available for iPhone and now Android 4.0 and above. Listen live or on demand anywhere, anytime. Go to coasttocoastam.com and download it today. to the wars in the future, right? The post, the post-apolitan, apolitic, the post, uh, after the place falls apart. Bill Handel. I'll get there. I get paid to do this. Mornings from 6 to 10 on KFI. Contractor license 147781. When your drain is clogged, you're told it won't flush, and that dirty water in your sink won't go down, and the tub won't drain. You still take tub baths, Zach? I'm a bubble bath man, can't Nine times out of ten, a good plumber with a drain cable is all it takes to open that clogged drain. And it's just $80 when you call Go. You know what I'm going to do for another $129? What? I'm going to send America's best AC tech to make six critical adjustments and bring that air conditioner back to factory specs. We're going to clean those outside coals while we're there? You bet. And we're going to clean them the right way, not the easy way. Best $80 you'll ever spend. Our rejuvenation makes your system cool better and faster so that your home uses less energy and has fewer breakdowns. Gettle. It rhymes with kettle. Except it starts with a G and it's spelled really weird. Gettle. G-O-E-T-T-L. We'll keep you cool, but it's hard to spell. I use CBDistillery.com products every night, and I happen to love the gummies. Now, with CBDistillery.com, I wake up less often in the night, I sleep better, more soundly, and it's a cannabis product, but it doesn't get you high. With CBDistillery.com, it's all about sleeping better, feeling calmer, although you couldn't tell with me, and dealing with aches and pains after exercise. And with over 2 million customers, CBDistillery.com is the company I trust, truly for safe, effective, natural CBD products. And I'm not a natural kind of guy, but with CBD products, it's different. Of course, you don't need a prescription. For Valentine's Day, CBDistillery.com is offering 20% off a gift assortment of CBD products. And this offer expires February 10th. Use the promo code LOVE. CBDistillery.com, promo code LOVE, 20% off. That's CBDistillery.com. This Valentine's Day, try a bed of red rose petals, a uh, heart-shaped box of your favorite candy, yeah. and a little stimulating talk. <laughs> KFI and KOST HD2, Los Angeles, Orange County. It's time for your morning wake-up call. Here's Layla Muhammad. February 9th, I'm going to have in for Jennifer Jones Lee, who is enjoying uh, some time off. She'll be back next week. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you this week so far. My final day this week. <laughs> I'm saying that you guys are wonderful. Your messages, you're so supportive and you're so sweet. I always tell Jen she has the best listeners on KFI. Don't tell Bill Handel. Yes. I like my sleep. 
five and a half hours last night. I felt so good this morning. I'm like a new woman. Can we get that song next, Tyler? You make me feel. Oh, she says natural woman, not a new woman. Same thing. Okay, it's KFI AM 640 live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. So we have a lot going on this morning, including some really great interviews. Uh, we're talking tech, we're talking agriculture, uh, we're talking about trade being disrupted at the U.S.-Canada border. A lot to dive into. But here are some of the big stories locally we're following. Super Bowl security, we're talking about how federal officers will be helping local law enforcement in Inglewood for the big game. Plus, prosecutors will not pursue sexual assault charges against Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer. And Girl Scout cookie shortage, you heard me, there's a shortage why stock is so low for some of the most popular cookies. I didn't see mine on the list, but I've been told the ones I like aren't really the, the popular ones, like the Thin Mints. Does anyone like Thin Mints anymore? Do the Girl Scouts still sell those? They do. They do, okay. I, 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 I talk to myself often. I do this at home, too. Have a whole conversation. Yeah, I think they're the best, but apparently they're not the most popular. So we'll talk about what those are and why their supply is so low. Okay, can we do this now? Thank you for my song. I feel very loved. At 5.05, we are headed to Beijing. Alex Brichet is going to join us with the details on the fight for the gold and men's figure skating. That's coming up shortly. I'm excited. But right now, let's start with some of the stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. The L.A. County Board of Supervisors has voted to move ahead with the termination of sheriff's deputies who refused to get vaccinated. The board voted to have the county's director of personnel to come up with a way to take over the disciplinary action and termination of sheriff's department employees. The director was told to come back with a plan on March 15th when the soups will do a review and final vote. The vote yesterday was unanimous with Supervisor Barger abstaining. Barger said such a broad action against one man, the sheriff, is inappropriate. It puts the county in danger if thousands of deputies are fired. Sheriff Villanueva says the mandate has the potential of getting rid of 4,000 employees in his department. See Gregory K. if I knew. Orange County will follow Governor Newsom's recommendation and end indoor mask mandates next week. L.A. County is taking a more cautious approach, as we've been telling you. Public Health Director Barbara Ferrer says the county will ease mask mandates when new COVID cases fall below 750 a day. That is for two weeks in a row. If current trends continue, that could happen by the middle of March. L.A. County D.A. George Gascon says after a review of evidence, witness statements, and the recent denial of a restraining order, his office will not pursue charges against Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer for sexual assault. I would say it's extremely unlikely that we could get, that we could actually uh, achieve a, a criminal prosecution in this case, and that is the reason why we came to the conclusion uh, that we would not move forward. A 27-year-old woman accused Bauer of assaulting her last year during rough sex. Bauer says the rough sex was consensual. He remains on leave from the Dodgers. UCLA has agreed to pay $243 million to settle 200 sexual assault abuse lawsuits tied to a former uh, campus gynecologist. Lawyer John Manley says in the last four years, schools across the country have paid out $2.5 billion because of doctors molesting patients. Right now in California, there are hundreds of doctors who are practicing medicine in this state who have administrative and criminal convictions for molesting their patients. There are thousands of doctors nationwide. And that settlement announced yesterday involved James Heath, who has pleaded not guilty to 21 felonies. A lawyer said UCLA ignored complaints for decades and concealed the abuse. UCLA says reforms have been put in place to protect students. Now, when we come back, we are headed to Beijing and the latest on the Winter Olympics. Right now, let's take a look at your drive this morning. We have a stall on the 110 in Gardena. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Layla. Uh, southbound after Rosecrans is where you'll find it. That stall in the center divider. Watch for slowing as you approach. Also a stall in Irwindale. The 210 West Pass is 605. Everything there is off the shoulder. And some Caltrans work in Castaic. The 5 southbound from Parker Road to Hasley Canyon. The two left lanes are shut down there until 6 a.m. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Dave Joseph. Thanks, Dave. And we say good morning to Alex Brache. Alex! Layla, how are you? Good morning. You, you sound so refreshed. You know, I say this, I keep forgetting. Okay, so it's, it's dark there now. It's almost evening, right? Or it is evening. Where you are. Yeah, so okay. it's, it's just after 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> okay, let's talk about this. First of all, can we start with what's happening um, with Michaela Schiffer? Dita Arvon. Yeah, so listen, I mean, Michaela came into these games. Nisa you know, Arba! 
huge, huge expectations. She's in five events total uh, and favored in, in most of them. But look, I mean, she's had, it's, it, now she's had back-to-back, -back, uh, did not finish it. And the one that she had most recently was in arguably her best event, the women's slalom, the 26-year-old made a costly escape, uh, excuse me, she made a costly mistake just five seconds in on her first run. She stumbled, missed uh, one of the first few gates. She was visibly upset. She collapsed and, and just kind of sat on the side of the course for, for more than 20 minutes, had to be consoled by one of her teammates. And afterwards, she was asked about the mistake and said it, it made her second guess the last 15 years. And so, look, I mean, for someone who came in with, with such high hopes, she just needs and one. It's a big game for that. She was one the first time as we say. Any other American Alpine here, and so I mean that kind of tells you the caliber uh, and and the level that that, that, that that she competes at. But she has to. It's like, a big game for that. The first time as we say. Hopefully, hopefully she can kind of right the ship, but um, but it's been a um, it's been a rough go so far. Yeah, it's just really sad to see that. That's a big point. Think about like Simone Biles and what she was going through. What she was going through uh, during. Mm -hmm. The, the, was it the summer game? Um, and we were hearing from her it was more of a mental health thing that was going on. Um, but Michaela's not saying that. It's just it's just surprising because she's you know this one of the best alpine skiers out there. So um, yeah, yeah. Ooh, well, you talking about Simone Biles and the twisties? And yeah. for Ma Michaela, she hasn't really elaborated as to like you know what what the mistake was or or was it, was it mental? Was it was it just the conditions out there? We have seen a number of skiers fall. Um, listen, Sean White even fell yesterday, but yeah. but we don't expect this from 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 people that uh, are.